welcome back to my channel. My name is Sonali, if you guys don't already know me. And today I'm going to be doing another sorority Q&A. I actually did a sorority Q&A last summer too, so that link will be in the description box below. And it will also be up here in case you guys want to watch that video first. So I posted a short video asking you guys to ask me questions. You guys asked me so many questions about Greek life, which makes my heart happy because that means you guys are really interested about it. And I hope this video really clarifies anything that you're confused about or helps you in any way. So let's get started. The first question is, do you think it would be too late to rush as a junior? I don't think it's too late if you're a junior. I know in my pledge class we had a handful of juniors and that means you have a lot more on your resume kind of thing so you're probably more involved because you were at that school for longer. Definitely don't get discouraged if you're a junior or a sophomore because you really never know. The next question is how often are socials? So for me we had a lot this year. I can't really remember how many, but I think we had like six last spring semester, but normally we only have three socials. And then we have events like Gravitates where we can bring anyone we want and we can take them to like really cool places. Like my sorority had a Gravitate to the Blue Man group at Universal and Halloween Horror Nights, which was awesome. I mean, for me, obviously my boyfriend's here, so I just go with my sisters that don't have dates and it's really fun. The next question is, how do you get a leadership position in your sorority? My biggest advice is to try to get involved with a lot of things freshman year. So you get to try every little position. So if there's a little committee for a big event, then you can do that and see if you want to chair that event next year. But if you're interested in being on council, I know my sorority has assistants for each position. So I was the assistant before I got my position and that prepared me to know what I'm doing today. What is it like having a boyfriend in a sorority? So my boyfriend does not go to the same college as me and he is not in a fraternity. So sometimes he, you know, may not understand some things. So you definitely have to be patient with them. I don't think it's really that big of a deal though because if let's say I go to a party, I'm going with my sisters to have fun with my sisters. I think it's so fun to like get dressed up with your girls and just like have a little adventure for the night. And another thing is that I always Snapchat Ryan like throughout the night. I know when people are like, oh, if you're Snapchatting your boyfriend, like you're not gonna have fun the whole night. I don't think that's true because if something funny happens, like I would wanna snatch at him and show him or like tell him. So I think that's like a fun way to like communicate and not have to be like texting a full like paragraph, you know? The next question is, how do you balance being in a sorority with being a student? Is it hard? It is not hard at all. Once you're in a sorority, you actually have to maintain a certain GPA and a lot of your sisters are in the same boat as you. You're there for school first and a lot of my sisters are always studying in the house. So it motivates you to kind of just like buckle down and study, you know? Sometimes I feel lazy, but then when I see all my sisters like spread out around the house, like studying their butts off, and I'm like, okay, Sonali, it's your time to study, you need to do it. So it's actually really nice to be surrounded by inspiring and motivating people with the same morals as you. So that's definitely an important thing to look out for when you're going through recruitment. Maybe ask if they have study hours or what GPA they have to maintain or anything like that. The next question is, how can you stand out during recruitment since there are so many girls. My number one advice for this is to be yourself because if you fake anything, then you're not gonna end up in the right house and you're gonna regret that. So just be yourself and let your personality shine through. I mean, everyone is unique in their own way, so you will stand out. Next is how do you start a conversation with one of the girls? I actually did a whole video on conversations for sorority recruitment, so I will have that link down below in the description box so you guys can check that out. But don't be too nervous walking into the house and starting a conversation because you're supposed supposed to feel as if this girl is your best friend and you can talk about anything. So I mean, if you are having trouble with your conversation, that might say something about the house for you. The next question is, will it hurt you at UCF if you go into recruitment without any rec letters? So personally, I thought it was so weird that UCF does not do recommendation letters. When I was walking by the Rogamas during summer B, I asked them if I needed recommendation letters and they said no, not at all. So don't even worry about that if you're going to UCF. But if you're going to a Southern school, I'm guessing you definitely do need them there. I know at schools like F FSU or UF Greek life is huge. Is it like this at UCF? So honestly, to me, it feels big, but if we're actually looking at like statistics, it is not. I remember hearing it's something like 10% to 15% is Greek life of the whole school. But remember, we do have a huge student body, something like 60,000 or something like that. So I mean, the percentage is gonna be less because there are so many 
um, people at the school. Honestly, it's not even comparable to UF or FSU because I was talking to my sister when I was going through recruitment and she was actually going through recruitment on the inside and she was like, oh my god, you're so lucky. You only have to go to like 12 houses. I have like X amount and it was almost close to like 20 houses or something. I don't remember the number, but that's just sororities. So like imagine how many fraternities they have as well. But again, to me, it feels big and big enough. So I love it. Next question is, what was it like being a minority rushing a majority white sorority? So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I was so scared going through recruitment because of my skin color. Um, I literally stalked all the tumblers just to find like, you know, diverse girls and finding that one diverse girl gave me like the teeniest bit of hope that I could get into that sorority. But honestly, it's really not like that. It doesn't matter about skin color or, you know, your culture or anything like that. I thought that was like a big factor for me, but you really don't have to worry about that. It's about your personality and who you are and your involvement back in high school or on your college campus if you're a sophomore or junior. And I love my sorority because it is so diverse and Diverse meaning, you know, cultures, skin colors, aspirations, hobbies, like everyone's so unique and individual that it's so cool to just like talk to everyone and get to know everyone and you have this like common bond of being in the same sorority. It's just so cool. The next question was similar to a previous one. It says, is it true that rushing and joining a sorority as a sophomore is harder than doing it as a freshman? It is not true. Um, at least at my school, it's totally not true. It's totally normal for you to want to get acclimated to the campus and UCF and your classes. And maybe Greek life is just a little bit overwhelming for you. My pledge class was super diverse. Again, we had a handful of juniors and we had a lot of sophomores and freshmen, obviously. But, you know, you get my gist. So another question about conversations. What did you talk about with the girl during house visits? So again, I do have that conversation video linked down below, so definitely go watch that. But maybe some quick questions to get the ball rolling. Um, you could ask them what their favorite memory was in the house. Um, do you live in the house? Do you want to live in the house? Anything like that really, but yeah, definitely check out that conversation video. So this is a good question. Okay, so I want to do fall recruitment, but I do not understand the early move-in situation. How do you move in early and let UCF Pan know you are moving in early? I looked online, but I didn't really understand it. Basically, how do you move in early and how were you able to rush? So for me, I was not moving into a dorm my fall freshman year when I was going through recruitment. So I actually had to stay in a hotel for a week alone and it was so scary and sad, honestly, because I didn't really know anyone at the time, you know? So I was basically alone living in a hotel living out of my suitcase for a week. But I know that if you are living on campus, they do early move in and I think you just have to contact your dorm. Um, I don't know, cause I didn't really have to go through that, but I definitely know that they do early move in. But if you are living in an off campus apartment, they usually only let you move in like that Saturday. So I think I moved in prep night. I think that might've been Friday. So yeah, you might have to stay with your friend or get a hotel room like me if you don't have any friends. That's definitely a con about living off campus. They do not let you do early move in. I literally like told them I would pay extra because I would be paying for a hotel room anyways. But they were like, nope. And I was like, okay. <laughs> the next question is, do you automatically end up in a sorority no matter what? I am scared of getting dropped and really want to be in one. So for this one, I would definitely say keep your mind open to anything because you never know which ones could drop you and which ones you want to drop, if that makes sense. Honestly, it just really doesn't make sense until you're going through it yourself. Next question is, if I rush my freshman year, is it worth trying again? Absolutely. I know a bunch of girls that have rushed like two times because the first time, maybe it just wasn't the right fit and so they dropped before they got initiated. And by the way, if you dropped after you get initiated into a sorority, then you can't go through recruitment again and get into another sorority, if that makes sense. So basically these girls dropped before initiation and decided to go through recruitment again, whether it was for fall recruitment again or the next spring recruitment. The whole point of going through recruitment is to find your home and where you fit in the best. So if you go through recruitment once and you just feel like it's not the right place for you, don't feel bad about dropping and going through it again because a lot of people do it. Next question is, are there any chances getting into a sorority when rushing in the spring? So the only thing that sucks about spring recruitment is that not every single sorority might have spring recruitment and during spring recruitment they don't take 
like 60 to 100 girls like they do in fall they'll take like 10 to even two sometimes so your chances are a little bit slimmer and if you haven't gone through fall recruitment once and don't know much about all of the houses then that might not be the best situation because you won't get to get that taste of every single house so i do recommend going through fall recruitment just because you get to see all the houses and get to talk to girls from every single house next is after joining a sorority do you have to pay to attend each social slash formal if so are the fees reasonable so for socials, you don't have to pay, at least for me. But for Gravidates, events such as going to the Blue Man Group, you do have to pay for. So you have to pay for your date and you, um, which could get expensive. But the thing that is so cool about Gravidates is that the sorority actually reduces the price. So let's say a ticket for Halloween Horror Nights is $70. Then the sorority will maybe reduce that price to, let's say, $55. So I mean, you're getting it at a really good price. So, I mean, if you're going to go to Halloween Horror Nights anyways, you might as well go with your sorority and get it at that discounted price. So, I think it's really reasonable. And for me, I don't really usually bring a date. I just go with sisters so I don't have to pay for another date. Next question is, should I wait until after recruitment to get a meal plan at UCF? I know that not all sororities have houses, which I think mean that they don't all have meal plan. If it is an option to wait to buy meal plan, I would say definitely wait because I think a couple of my sisters when I was a freshman did have that UCF meal plan and my meal plan, so it was kind of a waste of money. So next question is how many girls were rushing during your recruitment? I can't even remember, maybe something like a thousand or a thousand five hundred, like somewhere ranging in between those two numbers. And I know that's not a lot of people compared to like bigger southern schools. They have like crazy amounts of girls rushing. Next question is, how do you break the ice when first meeting a sister and who's supposed to be doing most of the talking? So it really doesn't hurt to ask those simple questions like what is your name? Where are you from? What's your major? Because you can bounce off of those if you have that in common. And both of you are supposed to be doing equal amounts of talking. If you sit there and give her short answers, then you know, it's going to be kind of a hard conversation. I know when I was going through recruitment, I was very curious about everything and had so many questions and I would advise you to ask any questions you have because you're there to find out about this sorority that you might be joining. So the sister is supposed to be asking you questions obviously, but don't hold back if you have some questions too. Next question is, other schools ask their P&Ms to wear black during prep night. What does UCF Pan recommend? So UCF doesn't recommend any specific color. You can really just wear anything um, that's a cocktail dress. So a fancier dress, maybe something that you would wear to a wedding. Personally, I would say stay away from white and black just because a lot of the sisters do choose to wear black or white on prep night. So I would maybe even recommend wearing a color that pairs well with your skin tone. So it kind of makes you just pop and you feel good about yourself. Next question is, what essentials should I bring for recruitment? I did a whole video about what's in my bag for recruitment, so I will also link that down below. Next question is, when do we know who our Rogamma will be? You might find out on that Saturday before recruitment or Sunday morning. I know for our recruitment, the P&Ms get to meet the Rogamma on Sunday night and just have like a little meet and greet and meet the people that are in your Rogamma group as well. Next question is, I've researched each sorority chapter, their philanthropy and their core values and I really identified with that sorority. Should I aim for that sorority or play it safe? So again, I would say keep your mind open. Um, it's really cool to stalk everyone's sororities, tumblers, and just like their websites and their Instagrams. It's super fun and entertaining. And you get to find out a lot about, you know, that chapter, but you really can't base it all on, you know, the pictures you see on Instagram. You have to talk to these girls in person and then actually feel it out. It's really important to make sure you feel comfortable at the house. So you might not be able to tell off an Instagram if you feel comfortable there, if that makes sense. Next question is, how do you deal with not being the prettiest person and going through recruitment with all the girls that are all so gorgeous? I literally had the hardest time with this because if you look back at my recruitment vlogs, you know, my eyebrows were awful and like my makeup was like melting off my face and you know I didn't really have that much confidence back then as I do now but I did not let that bring me down because if you feel confident about yourself who you are you know what you do your personality everything like that that really shouldn't matter to them and again I know I'm repeating myself over and over again but it is so important to feel comfortable about that house that you do end up choosing so if your makeup is half off and you're just melting maybe smell a little 
you know, you shouldn't feel intimidated when you walk into that house. So just make sure you're picking the house that makes you feel the most confident. Next question is, do sororities help girls pay for their dues? Girl, I freaking wish. No, they actually don't, but I bet you can find a lot of scholarships online. Sometimes I'll get emails about my sorority having scholarships, and sometimes UCF Pan actually gives out scholarships too. I think this past year you just had to like write a essay about yourself or you can nominate someone else so that's really cool and so I would definitely look into those once you join a sorority. Next question is, is it common for girls in sororities to hang out with girls who aren't in sororities? It is absolutely common. My roommate for freshman and sophomore year was not in a sorority and she was my best friend and that didn't really matter and honestly it was a really cool experience because it gave us the ability to have like our separate lives but still being best friends if that makes sense. So I would tell her stories about my day and then she would tell me stories about her day. And I know a lot of my other sisters have maybe friends that they met summer B that didn't go through recruitment. So it is definitely common. Next question is, do you recommend getting the meal plan if you are an off-campus student? So I think you're talking about sororities for this one, but I 100% recommend it because I'm at my sorority house all the time anyways. And even if I have a class during the meal plan hours, I can actually sign up for a late plate. So I still get to have food when I come back from class. And I actually park at my sorority house to go to class anyway. So it's pretty convenient having a meal plan and then just going to class. The next question is, do you think majoring in a medical related field would be difficult to balance with being in a sorority. So many of my sisters are actually in that field. I'm personally not in one myself, but if you ask them, they'd probably tell you that it's more encouraging than discouraging because you have all these sisters to maybe give you advice on which classes to take for that medical related field or even sisters to study with. So I think it actually benefits you in that way. Next question is, I just registered for UCF recruitment and it gave me a group number. My friend also got the same group number. Does that mean we will be put together for recruitment as in a Rogamma group? It actually does not because I remember being in so many like group meetings and Facebook groups with um, just girls going through recruitment at UCF and we were trying to like figure out who got in the same Rogamma group. But the number we got on the website didn't correlate with our Gamma group. I always get a lot of questions about if you can juggle a job and a sorority. Half of my sisters, if not more, have jobs and have internships and they are active members in my sororities. Personally, I think that having a job and being in a sorority just makes you get better at your time management skills. For example, if you have to work in the morning and you have a sorority event that night, then maybe you can work on assignments due that night the day before. So that's it on my sorority q and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I want to do more sorority videos so please let me know if you guys have any ideas. I do have a whole playlist of the sorority videos that I have made already so I'll be linking that down below for you guys. One more thing, I wanted to do a video where I defined certain Greek life terms or sorority terms or anything like that so if you guys are confused about any terms at all comment them down below and I'll be happy to make that video for you guys. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys! <laughs> Thank you.